Horatio is our topic of today. Maybe you've heard of Horatio. Anybody ratios? Anybody? I think they got some direction here. Somebody said something, ratio? Elijah ratio? What is water to ratio? Yes, it is. It's a relationship between numbers. Not like a boy girl. Okay. Between numbers. You have worked with ratios many times before. There are three different ways to show ratios. Uh, one of them would be like this. Uh, let's just do it like this. Uh, how many fifth graders are there? What is it? 23? Well, let's do that. Normally, there's 23 fifth graders. How many boys? How many girls? Seven boys. Seven boys. Seven boys. Seven boys. Seven boys. Sixteen girls. Okay. Here it is. The ratio. The relationship of boys to girls. If I ask you that question, you could give it to me three different ways. One of them we accept more than the others, but one of them looks like this. 7 to 16, or you could write it like this, 7, and you just put a colon there, 2, 16, maybe it's a double column, is it? It's not just one. Or it is the fraction 7 16 These are all called ratios. Okay? I'll let you write that down. I'm going to talk just a little bit about that. Some things you have to remember about ratios. Okay? <coughs> Ratios, number one, okay, order is important. And that means this. My ratio is boys to girls. So boys has to be first, girls has to be second. Boys first, girls second. Boys on top, girls on bottom. If I flipped it around and I asked you the relationship of girls to boys, these would all be the same except completely flipped around. It is 16 to 7, 16 to 7, and 16 to 7. So the order is important in a ratio. The first one given has to be the first one listed there. Second one, second one. The second thing... The second important thing is you must, if you can, you must reduce. Now in this case I didn't have to, but if it happened to be there was one more boy and it was 8 to 16, okay, you could not leave it as 8 to 16. You have to think about this as a fraction. If you have 8 sixteenths as a fraction, what does that reduce to? One half. And you'd have to say 1 to 2, 1 to 2. By the way, if you're ever asked for a ratio, you're always going to give it in fraction form for right, for right now. This is our acceptable way of writing it as fractions. Okay? The third one, pay special attention to because I have people ask me this a thousand times a year. Okay? If you do have it as a fraction and it's improper, Okay, you have to leave it as improper. Leave improper as a fraction. Okay. In other words, if it was if it asked me for a ratio of if I was using this and it asked me for girls to boys and it ended up being 16 over 8, you have to reduce it, but you need to leave it as an improper fraction, which would be what? 2 to 1. Okay. You don't change it to a, a mixed number, you leave it in fraction form and just reduce it. Because it's looking for that certain ratio. If I said, you know, the ratio of boys to girls was three and a half, what does that mean? I mean seven to two, seven over two, three and a half, not so much there. Okay, so keep in mind those things when you do ratios. Let's do a question. 
uh, a team, hopefully this is a cup, a team lost three games and won seven games. What is the lost to win ratio? The lost to win ratio would be, again, if you're making it fraction form, if you're making a fraction, you have to put the lost on top because it's the first one given, and the wins on the bottom because it's the second one given. Jill, it is? Three over seven. Three to seven, yes. What would be the win to loss ratio? Wins to losses would be, Riley? Seven over three. Seven over three. And again, you can leave that as improper. As long as it's reduced, you're okay. Now, sometimes you have to do a little figuring here. Like this one. In a class of 28 students, 13 are boys. In a class of 28 students, 13 are boys. What is the boy to girl ratio? Again, remembering you want the boy to girl ratio, so you need to figure out how many boys and how many girls. And it doesn't tell me how many girls. It just says 28 students, 13 are boys. But you being in sixth grade, I'm sure can devise some way to figure out how many are girls. How many boys are there? 13. How many girls? 15, because you subtract. You're not a boy, you're a girl. What if I asked you the girls to total students? What would be that ratio? Girls, how many girls out of how many total students there are? What would that ratio be? Jay? 15. 15 what? 15. Total students, there's only 13 total students in the class? 15 out of 28. 15 out of 28. Correct. Shabam? Shamazel? Possum mm -hmm. Pepper Incorporated? Now we're not done yet because we have to forge ahead too with ratios. We have what's called rate. And the reason they throw rate here with ratios is because rate is a ratio that compares measurements. Maybe you've heard of these rates before. We have speed. Speed, ladies and gentlemen. When you get in your car, when you get in the car and you're asked what speed you're going, what would be a possible answer? What is the, what's the speed limit? The fastest you're allowed to go on our normal roads here with W&I on the expressway, Laney, is 45 what? Miles per hour. Speed is a ratio that compares miles to hours. It's a ratio. Isn't that what that miles to hours. And like Laney said, if the speed limit is 45, it is 45 miles per one hour. Correct? Any other rates that you can think of? I'll just tell you. When your parents go to buy a car, they still each other. That's just the kind of kids they are. Sixth grade, this by the way is my nephew, do you look alike? Huh? 
Oh, Everybody said that. I heard that. Was, I don't The height. You can take that chair. Jules, Jules will throw you that chair right there. What's that? This here just, he, is, he is a senior in high school, and he's thinking about maybe being a teacher. Grace, by the way, he would be two days younger than her, exactly two days younger than her. Back. What's that? Yeah, she was your assistant. Back to the discussion at hand, kids. Other ratios, when your parents go to buy a car, usually one of the factors, whether they buy the car or not, is Keith. Mileage. Mileage. Which is a comparison of what? When somebody says, what, what kind of mileage did you get with that car, Jaden? It is comparing? Uh, gas. Comparing gas? No, uh, like diesel to regular? Uh, uh, per what, though? Uh, gallon. What's the ratio for mileage? Somebody? MPG is what we do. You know. What is that? What does MPG stand for? Uh, miles. Per, by the way, that word per, when you see that word per in math, that is a fraction line. Gallon. Anybody know what you said the average car mileage, miles per gallon is? You had to take a relatively guess there, Jilly? <coughs> what would be good gas mileage? Um, yeah, that'd be very good, actually. If you went 40 miles, <laughs> Per gallon, I mean, that, that's that's a pretty good. I would say probably average cars are probably in the mid to upper twenties, maybe depending on whether you're on the express or on the road. Riley's going to say his tractor gets how many miles per gallon? Um, I think it's like six. Yeah, not very much. Um, yeah. good. It would be one billion miles a gallon. We're still waiting for that one to be uh, made up there. One more thing. Another example of ratios, comparison of measurements. Uh, I'll give you a little, maybe you can pick this one up. When you go to the store, and most of you don't buy a lot of your own stuff, but I'll bet your parents do. And they go and they look and they look at things to buy. I'll bet they look at this ratio. Does anybody know what it is? It is a unit, it's a price thing, but price, you know, if you go and you look at your two boxes of cereal, Lady Kavar, yeah, but what's the, what's the, what's the ratio you're comparing there? What's that? We call it this, we call it unit price, unit price, and that would be it could be a, a couple different things, but a lot of times it's cents per ounce. You know, you go and you look and I think do I think the stores are, have to do that. You look, they have a little red little tag there, and it'll show you exactly how much it costs. You know, maybe it's cereal is maybe I don't know twenty cents an ounce. I don't know twenty cents per ounce. Okay, these are all your ratios. They are rates that compare different measurements. You know, you could do it with yourself. You could say how many inches per year you grow as an average. I'm sure it changes. Uh, other rates you can think of? Maybe not. Problems you do per hour? Yeah. How, how, many, how long it's going to take you to do today's assignments? If you're doing, you do five problems a minute, which I'll we'll never do. Write down this one last problem here. Um, on a bike trip, Jeremy rode 60 miles in 40 hours. On a bike trip, Jeremy <coughs> rode 60 miles in 4 hours. 
what was his what speed in MPH was he going? <coughs> So we're looking for that ratio of miles per hour. So you could write that fraction out even before you look at the rest of the problem. Miles per hour. Filling in the blanks from the problem, they tell you how many miles. How many miles did he go? I know it's hard. 60. How many hours did it take him to do that? Four. Four. Now remember when we talked about rates, okay, you leave them in fractional form, but they do need to be reduced. Mostly because to me that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, my the speed limit sign said you can go 60 miles in four hours. Wow, uh, yeah, what does that mean? Our speedometers give miles per one hour. So you need to reduce this. What number goes into both 60 and 4? Keith? Four. If you divide 60 by 4, let's just take my word for it, it's 15. If you divide 4 by 4, you get 1. And don't forget about your labels, people. Most people get lazy and don't do that. 15 miles per 1 hour, or how do we usually say that? We usually go 15 mph, but that's what it means, 15 miles per 1 hour. If you're good at typing, there's a ratio of how many words per minute you can type. Most of you aren't very good at that because you're all in the honey pack kind of thing. Yeah. We will change by eighth grade, I'm sure of it. Joe, please. Uh, uh, all right, that's probably enough of that. I'm good with that. You're good with that.